Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. For the past couple of weeks, I've been uh, uploading comic strips. Uh, these little panes, I'm not saying that I'm a pain, I mean a pain, a comic pain, uh, have been generated using a couple of different applications. One uh, for iOS, specifically the iPhone, and the other one uh, on uh, the Mac, although a PC version may very well be available. I could likely get the process done with just one piece of software, but I've yet to find anything that has worked so well. Uh, and every time I've uploaded one of these images, inevitably someone asks, and sometimes more than one person asks, Chris, how did you do this? Did someone draw this? No, this image that you're looking at here on my iPad was actually created based on a photo that I took uh, uh, with the iPhone and converted with the software that's also on the iPhone, I'll demonstrate in a second, and then the comic bubble with my thought uh, was generated in another utility that unfortunately isn't uh, really available uh, on uh, iOS. There are some comic speech bubbles uh, on uh, iOS at least uh, apps, uh, you know, in the iTunes App Store, but most of them suck right now. And I was looking to create something, you know, pretty high quality, or at least high quality enough, to the point where, at the end of this year, I hope to have uh, 365 of these little panes uh, ready to go to a comic book. I'm going to create my own comic book. Yeah, and I'm going to make it print on demand so that anybody can buy the comic book. I'm going to be in a comic book, but I'm going to make it myself and all the gags and all the pictures and the setup and everything. Uh, anyway, so I'm seeding these images out right now. Uh, you could, uh, you know, find them on uh, my Twitter account at Chris Perillo, Facebook.com slash Chris Perillo or Chris.Perillo.com. So here is what I do. First, I think of a gag. I think, well, that's kind of funny. Uh, you know, I wonder if it would work well in some kind of a visual uh, uh, capacity. And then I take an image, not with the iPad, at least at this point in time, but specifically with the iPhone, because I, I typically will have the iPhone with me wherever I am. Uh, and then, when I'm done taking the image, I open up an application called Tune Paint. Now, this is the app that's used to uh, transmogrify a photo into something that looks like uh, an ink drawing. And there are various controls uh, that uh, you can use to uh, finely tune the image, uh, the black levels, the gray levels, and of course the white levels. And that's what I was looking to do. Now you can do more with the application, uh, but I'm, I, I, I haven't. I, I think uh, you know creating a black and white ink drawn like image of something is, well, kind of artsy fartsy, sure, but it's fun! So let's go ahead and launch Tune Paint out of the, how many apps do I have on here now? 750 some odd thousand apps? No, there's not that many available, but I do have like over 750 apps installed on here. Now, uh, Tune Paint, uh, if I haven't already mentioned it in this particular video, is probably one of the ugliest apps I've ever used on iOS. Seriously, uh, they have not hired a single designer for this application, so please look past its extreme ugliness. Oh, it's nasty. It's seriously, it's bad. Like, this is not an example of how an iPhone app should be designed. But the output it produces is amazing. Like I can't find anything that works just as well. Uh, and, and that's the key is to, to make it look like it was drawn uh, by hand uh, by an artist. And I'm certainly not an artist. So here we go, Tune Paint. Uh, there was the ugly splash screen right up front. Sorry about that. And I'm sorry for uh, every control that you're about to find uh, here uh, in uh, the application. Now I can either load an image uh, from the library, which is what I typically do, because I want to make sure I get the right source image. Uh, and usually if there's enough lighting in the room, uh, I can get a, a pretty good con Contrast. I've even tried it even uh, with with uh, uh, images that were shot in lower light, and it st still seems to pick out uh, enough details. It's a very very good app, functionality wise. So uh, let's go ahead. Um, oh, I can actually, if I wanted to, uh, pull up any one of the earlier sessions, and uh, this basically automatically stores any one of uh, the images that I've processed in the past. That's kind of nice. It auto saves. So let's go ahead. I'm just going to load one directly from the camera. And uh, let's do this here, like, okay, so there's me opening my mouth, and I'm going to go ahead and use that, I don't know why, and in a couple of seconds time, it will process that image uh, that was taken again from the iPhone, as you very well saw, it'll process that image and turn it black and white. Do you see that? It is so clean. 
a, you know, I've not seen another application for iOS, either the iPad, iPhone, or iPod Touch, that has done such an amazing job uh, without applying any kind of tweaks right out of the gate. And this is it. Tune Paint is the only one I can recommend using for this type of conversion at this point in time. Sure, you could probably spend thousands of dollars, you know, buying a desktop software that kind of does the same thing, but this is easy and relatively affordable. It was cheap. It was free, actually, a couple of weeks ago. You should have been following me and you could have got it for free. I don't know if it's still free. Go.tagjag.com slash TunePaint. If it's not free, I'm sorry. You should have been following me. I find this stuff all the time and share it even when I can't get it into a video first. So uh, looks like some of the finer details uh, are, were picked up, but if I wanted to, uh, I could go ahead and open up the shading options and herein I can adjust the slider, or I guess a series of sliders. I can increase the amount of edges, which would make me more wrinkly, and you can see specifically around my eyes, and that's not exactly the look I'm going for in this particular uh, image. Uh, let's take the edges down. I can bump up the gray. And I've zoomed in to, hopefully you're able to see this okay. And it's a little difficult to, to adjust this stuff from the side, by the way. Uh, let's take down the black just a bit. There, it looks good. Zoom out. Okay, that looks like uh, it's something I could use. Now, I could also go in and uh, tweak the coherence. Uh, and if I, I can go from uh, an extra small all the way to extra large, edge width, I can go extra small to extra large, or the edge length, uh, right now, uh, uh, that one's default to medium, the other two are defaulted to small. But you know, I, I think this is a workable image, and I'm sorry if I'm looking just off camera because I've got a preview window to make sure uh, I'm holding the iPhone upright so that you can see it just fine. And the next step is to then paint it if we wanted to. And I'm not really uh, one uh, who's been interested in painting the image. You could pay for an in-app upgrade that makes it easier to uh, paint uh, the image, but I've, I've done everything in black and white. Uh, just like the Paul Simon song, Kodachrome, uh, I love black and white. You know, everything looks good in black and white. Well, I know it's an old song. Everyone's a critic, even my dog. Either way, when I'm done with that, I press the done button. It was so hor this app was so horribly designed, they couldn't even center the word done. Like seriously, I, I don't know who did this, but they need to work on it. Functionality is awesome. The design of the app, not so much. So uh, now we can save to the photo gallery, save to Facebook, Twitter, or email a picture, or submit to Hall of Fame. I typically just save to the photo gallery, and the reason why is so I can make sure I get a high quality export from there. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to take that image in a couple of seconds. It's got to process it, of course. Got to save it out. Uh, as just a regular old JPEG is, is how it saves it. I'm going to go ahead and jump out, go into the photo library here on uh, the iPhone. I don't really have a lot of photos. I kind of uh, keep them clean. There we go. Let's go ahead and email the photo. And I'm basically going to email it to myself. Mm, oop, if I spell my name right. Uh, there we go, chrisperlo.com, sending it actual size. Again, I'm going for as high quality as I possibly can. And now, I gotta think of a gag for this. I haven't, that's one of the things I normally do uh, when I, uh, uh, you know, take a, a, a cartoon photo of myself or prepare the cartoon photo uh, is I think of the gag before I take the photo, because otherwise, what gag am I going to write for that photo? Okay, uh, we'll figure something out. Uh, then I go in here. Uh, that was the one I'd sent to myself earlier. Now this image didn't actually get used in a comic. Uh, I took another one and I thought it worked a little better uh, for my needs. Uh, this is the image I just sent to myself. I'm going to go ahead and drag it out of the mail client. I'm going to go ahead and quit that app. And now I'm going to uh, call up a, a, a utility you might uh, have remembered from a while ago. They used to be a sponsor, uh, Comic Life. Uh, from Plask. They also make the program Stitch. And uh, I went ahead and I just bought this new version, Comic Life 2. Sorry, Comic Life 2. Uh, not available for the PC. Comic Life 1 is available uh, for, well, for Windows, not necessarily for, for Linux that I know of. They are working on an iPad app uh, version of uh, their... <laughs> Hang on, my mouse got stuck in the virtual KVM there for a second. Um, they are working on an iPad version of Comic Life, and I can't wait to see that because hopefully it will uh, refine my workflow so that I don't have to launch a desktop app to finish the job. Again, there are applications available on iOS to make this entire process easier, but none of them uh, are really, none of them, what, none of them? 
none of them uh, really uh, match the uh, the quality that I'm looking for in terms of output. Uh, an image that looks good, it looks like it could have been done up by an artist and uh, put together by a, a professional uh, illustrator. So Comic Life 2, all we got to do, I've set up a template here. Uh, it's just a single pane. Uh, you could, of course, apply uh, other panel layouts to uh, a, a, a comic. Uh, this one's fine for my needs. And then I just simply drag in a bubble. I select the bubble I want. That one looks fine. Drag it in there. It's got nice little sound effects. And I haven't turned them off. I think it's kind of fun. Uh, and then I go blah, 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 blah. Okay, so that's it. I then drag the speech bubble around. Yeah, there we go. Get it looking good. Okay, I, I'm just... I, that wasn't really typing anything. And then from there, I just export it. That's it. It's how I get it done. Uh, Toon Paint on iOS, uh, but specifically for uh, smaller screens. They don't have an iPad version available, and until they hire a designer, I don't blame them. Uh, and then uh, on the, the desktop, specifically Mac OS X, I use Comic Life 2. You could use Comic Life 1 if you wanted to. Um, you know, they, they, they pretty much do the same thing, although I find the lettering in the comic bubbles uh, to be a bit better on Comic Life 2 compared to Comic Life 1. Eh, it's up to you. And as I said, there are other apps out there that'll kind of do the same thing, but in terms of the workflow that I've found has produced the highest quality output, uh, Comic Life 2 and Toon Paint. But if you can't use a, a workable source image, uh, then you know putting any kind of bubbles atop it is is well relatively useless. I don't know. Maybe you guys know of a good iOS developer who could create that all-in-one package, stem to stern, from the photo, the transmogrification, all the way to the the bubble addition and the exporting. I don't know. I I, I would love to to find out though uh, because this takes a little bit of time. Yeah, maybe about five minutes or so. But if I can work that down to a minute, even better. So uh. That's it. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to, maybe I will. Maybe I'll post this. I got, actually, here's what I'll do. I'm going to save this image. I'm going to go ahead and delete this uh, bump. Did you hear? I'm going to save this image uh, right now. I'm not going to write the gag. I'm going to have you write the gag, okay? And I'm not going to say the one that gets the most thumbs up on YouTube is going to make it into the gag. Uh, but I'll uh, look through all the comments on YouTube uh, for this particular image that uh, we've captured here. And uh, the one that I think is the, the most humorous, I don't know, I'm not really doing anything here, so make it pithy, because you know I love getting pithed off. No, no, no. You guys think of the gag for this one. Uh, and now I've recorded the video uh, to uh, explain how I do these comic pains. Stay tuned for what will be volume one of a comic book starring me and think... Well, yes, probably. I just haven't done it yet. Wicket's wondering if he's going to be in the comic... You can get your own next year! <clears throat> so uh, I will, again, be making that comic book available, print on demand, unless I can find a publisher <laughs> who would want to print this and sell it. And I don't know who would buy this other than people in the community. Maybe I'll sell like three copies, one to me, one to my dog, one to my... I don't know if... I don't know if mom would buy it. Probably not. <clears throat> Either way, if you know of better tools... I'm interested in taking a look, especially if they're affordable, really. Yeah, Comic Life 2 only cost 20 bucks. Uh, Toon Paint was free, and uh, I'm just looking to have fun with technology, because if you can't have fun with technology, what's the freaking point? My email address, chris at perillo.com. Post a comment here on YouTube, and, uh, you know, give me your best gag. Maybe it'll, you know, make that strip. Or if it doesn't make this strip, if it's a good, you know, gag, something that might work well, uh, I might use it in, a, a, you know, another strip uh, that uh, gets included in the collection at some point. I don't even have a name for the comic book. What would I call the comic book? It would have to be something punny, I think. I, I'd like something punny. I'm a big pun guy. <laughs> I don't know why. I just love playing with words and apps. Uh, we got a chat room uh, that is typically trained in the uh, in, to the back of my head as I'm sitting here typing. It, have I? Is it trim back there? I got it cut recently, and actually, the only reason why I got my hair cut is because someone commented on Twitter says, "You know, the back of your head is looking like it needs trimmed." I'm like, oh yeah, I kind of rely on the community to 
uh, help remind me to stay well groomed for everybody. Either way, uh, you are more than welcome to join us, uh, and uh, I've got the live stream uh, going out over the web, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. And you may even catch me creating a comic at some point. It's likely. The only way to find out is to stop by. We're geeking out right there at live.perillo.com. We'll see you later.